Good evening, welcome to part three of my accordion repair and restoration videos. Uh, and today I'm going to be going over some valving of the reeds because we've taken the reeds out, cleaned the reeds up, cleaned the reed blocks, and it's time to put some valves onto the reeds. Before we do that, I'm going to show you this. This is my last restoration that I did, and this is a Hona Club Model 3 Melodeon uh, from about 1924 ish, so nearly 100 years old. So I completely refurbished this one, um, did all the reeds and the, fixed the bellows and uh, pallets and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it plays really, really nicely. I haven't played it for a while, but I thought I'd give it a little blast before we go. This is just, my, just to show you what I've done in previous restorations. So this is my 100 year old, uh, well nearly 100 years old Melodian. So let's see if I can get a tune out of this one. <laughs> This is my uh, little melodeon. I really like it. It's kind of a funky little thing. So that's my last restoration. I'll put that down for a minute. Anyway, that's kind of beside the by, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Right, so this is where we've got to. So the reed block has come out of the treble side and completely cleaned up. All the wax taken off, sanded, really nice and clean, smooth. Uh, and the reeds, actually I'll just show them here, there we go, they've all been cleaned and I've checked all the reed heights uh, to make sure that's all, all, all good. Uh, and I've actually revolved one set of reeds already, but I'll show you now how I'm going to uh, revolve the second set. So when the reeds are all ready to go and cleaned and the, the valve, the reed tip height is just where you want it and all working guys it's time to put the the valves on now when you put the valves on you can choose between different kinds of valves you can get leather ones um, I've got some here actually um, so I've got some some leather valves here and you can get kind of plasticky ones now the plasticky ones um, I've just got some in my little trays here you can see there so I've got a selection of plasticky ones. I'll just show you a few of these. So the plasticky ones, here's one. Uh, it looks like this. And it's got two layers. It's got the gold layer and the black layer. Now the, the benefit of these is that they do last quite a nice long time. And the two layers, actually the second layer helps to keep the valve flat. So when you put the, the valve onto the reed, what you're looking for is that valve to sit completely flat on the reed. So when it when it's not being used, when the reed's not being operated, that valve's sitting flat and that means that that reed won't make any noises. So if the, re if the valve isn't sitting flat, when the air goes through that could actually activate that reed when you don't want it to because you want that reed to be silent. So the, the valve has to be flat. Um, when that reed's not being wanted to be used, if you like. So with these plastic evolves, they've got multi-layers. Where are we? There. Um, which help to keep the valve flat. If you're using a leather valve, they don't have the multi-layers, but what you can do is put like a little very thin steel uh, piece of wire almost that you stick on top of the leather valve. It's called a spring. Uh, and uh, that just helps to keep those valves flat. So you can use those and they're really nice, but for this acc accordion, I'm gonna use plastic valves, which are multi-layers. And I've got one, two, three, four, five different sizes, I'll show you. So on here, I've got five different sizes of valves and you can choose the size of valve to match the size of the reed. 
So what you want is the, the valve not to be too wide, so it goes over the edge of the reed plate, not too long, but not too short. So it's got to go right to the edge of the slot, if you like. So when, you, when you're choosing the, the valve, you, you know, you're making the most appropriate choice for the size of the reed. And once you've got the reed on, plat a valve on, then you can trim it as well, if you have to. So let's just show you how I do this. So for these reeds, I'm going to start off with this double layer, uh, yeah, gold and black plastic or vinyl valve. And what I'm going to do is get some glue. And I've tried different glues in the past. I have been using Hona valve glue, but when I went to my little box, it just deteriorated and got all hard, and that was actually run out. So what I did today um, was experiment with different glues to see if I could find something that worked equally as well. So I tried a few little glues out, and I found that this one, so it's just Loctite all-purpose adhesive, works really well. And the good thing about this one is it's got a nice fine end to it, so you can get some nice accurate gluing. Right, so here's my first read. That I'm going to put a valve on. So I'm going to get my, my valve and I'm going to put some glue onto the valve. Now I'm going to put about one, a fifth of the length of the valve. So I'm going to put, the, I'm going to glue about one fifth of the length. Where are we? Where's the camera? There. About one fifth of the length of the valve. And then I'm going to pop the valve onto the reed. And so the valve is butting up to the, the rivet. Like that. So the valve is now sitting nice and straight. I'm going to just leave it just for that glue to, to dry. And then once that's all, after a few seconds really, what I can do then is trim the valve. So it's just, the end of the valve is just level with the slot. Okay, so, or maybe just very slightly underneath it. So it's kind of level with that slot, so it's not coming over too much. So that's the, the first valve on. So I'll just put another one on the next one. So I'll get my next read. I'm keeping them in order, so they don't get molded up. And I'm going to use the same valve again, so it's a two layer black and gold. Uh, I'm going to put the, the glue on to about one fifth of the, the valve. Butt it up against the, the rivet. go and just leave that to, to set or dry for a little bit. So I'm going to carry on doing these and um, put some more valves on and then I'll show you how I trim them uh, once they've just dried a little bit. Okay so I'm going to trim that first valve that I put on. If you can see the valve is just a little bit longer than the slot. So I've got my trusty Swiss Army knife with a lovely pair of little scissors on there. And I'm just going to carefully trim the end off of that valve. And I'll show you what it looks like now. Here we are. And now that valve is just perfectly lined up with the end of the slot. Okay, that's good. Now, because I've trimmed the the gold part of the valve, the long bit, I'm also going to trim the plastic second layer because I don't want that to be too long because if that's too long, it will actually make the valve a bit harder to open. So actually, I'm going to trim that one. So it's got a smaller length of black on there. And so that's going to have a nice action now when the the air is going through and that will allow the valve to move. So that's my valve done. Put that down there. So I'm going to do the same thing for the the second valve. Again, you can see it's, it's longer than the slot. 
So I'm going to just trim that to the right length. And trim the black. There we go. So now I've got the first two valves done. So those are, oh, you can see there, the first two are done. So I'm going to go along the line and do all of the other valves. Now, when I've done that, I'm not going to put the valves on the other side of the reeds. And there's a very good reason for that. And the reason is, when I come to waxing the reeds in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put we've got a reed like this. I'm going to put them in with that valve facing down like that. And it hasn't got a valve on that one. Because when I put the wax on, the wax is going to go around these reeds all the way along this reed block. And if I get any wax on the reed plate, that we need to be cleaned off before I put the valve on. So by putting the, the valve on after I've waxed them in means I can clean off any wax that might have got onto that reed plate and then I can stick the valves on. But those ones on the inside, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is valve up all of these reeds uh, and uh, and then that's, that's ready for me to uh, start thinking about waxing them into the reed block. Okay. Okay, so I finished my valving. I'll just show you. Hurry. There we go. So all the valves are now done. That's neat. So they're all ready to go and to be waxed into the the reed block. Now before I do that, I've got one more little job to do. So one of the valve, one of the reeds was the one this one here that I actually found from my little collection of reeds because one reed was missing from the reed block, which is just completely weird, but there we are. So the reed chamber that it's going to go in is the one I've marked with a little cross there. And I've got to make that chamber just a little bit longer because that, that, that reed plate and the reed tongue itself is just a bit longer than the one that would have been in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a very sharp craft knife and I'm just going to elongate by just cutting carefully with my craft knife and just cutting away some of that wood just to get that. So I'm just going to be very carefully cutting some of that wood away just to make that just a little bit deeper. So I'll just do that for a second and I'll come back. Okay, so the one with a little cross on it, I've just, there we go, I've just lengthened that one slightly so that the reed when it goes into that one is not going, the reed tip is not going to hit the chamber. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, all, all of the reeds have been valved on one side uh, and in the next video I'm going to get the reed block and I'm going to show you how I wax the, the reeds nicely into the reed block. Okay, thanks for watching.